uh, we have spent quite a lot of time looking at uh, recovering a clock from the uh, data from some random data and then associated components we needed PLL and so on we know how to make that ok. So, now I will look at uh, data transmission through a channel we assume that earlier if we transmit data nearly the same data comes through at least you can distinguish the ones and zeros so that you can decode that. But that is not always possible when you send data over a long distance through a medium which has attenuation. Okay. So, this channel can be anything it can be a printed circuit board coaxial cable fiber and so on ok. Now, in general uh, let me take the example of uh, a cable or the trace on a board either will be the same we have the transmitter and it will have some internal resistance and we have the channel, we have the receiver which can have a terminating resistance ok. This stuff in the middle uh, ideally we want it to be a short like between these two points right. So, whatever is the transmitted voltage appears at the receiver or maybe a small I mean some fraction of it appears at the receiver. But uh, what happens here? So, this one because it has some length first of all it will have inductance and a series resistance at least and it will also have capacitance to ground ok. In general it will be a distributed system because you are looking at uh, communicating over a long distance long is not long in an absolute sense, but uh, uh, electrically long ok. So, that long can be few centimeters to many tens of meters and so on or even longer. So, in general like uh, most channels act in a low pass manner that is for uh, very low frequencies right for DC it will be a short I mean you can take any channel you want I mean if you take a coaxial cable for instance for DC there is no problem this end is shorted to that end it is a wire I mean it will have a small resistance but that may not be very significant. But as you go to higher and higher frequencies even this structure this looks like a low pass right because the capacitor is a short at high frequencies and then the inductors are open. So, as you send higher and higher frequency signals the uh, attenuation goes on increasing ok a smaller for a given amplitude given input amplitude a smaller amplitude comes at the output. So, in general they are low pass, but it does not have to be I mean there are some channels which may be band pass also in that they do not pass DC either like uh, typically uh, those examples are where you do not have a physical connection ok you may have an inductive coupling. So, if you have inductive coupling between two sides obviously, it is not it is open for DC also right and then it will work in some frequency range and then it will again become a low pass filter at very high frequencies ok. So, those are there, but the most common things that we find the PCB tracers and coaxial cables are low pass ok. So, what does the characteristic look like? First of all, if you have an RC low pass if this is your channel by the way this uh, <coughs> combination of L R and C and probably even a loss resistance here this is a very general model it applies to everything. Now, depending on the context you may be able to neglect some of those right may be uh, in some cases the resistive part is so large that you neglect L because it behaves mostly resistive ok. And in also in some cases you may not have to split it up into so many parts that is you may not have to distribute the network you use the lump you use a lumped approximation and that may be good enough also ok. 
So, here first I am showing a lumped element approximation. In this case, what happens if you look at the frequency response, the magnitude response of uh, V naught by V i. So, it will be some first order transfer function, right. Okay. And then, uh, like I said, most of the times you transmit rectangular pulses, we assume rectangular binary signaling. So, in this case, if you send a pulse, what happens is that uh, let us say this is the input pulse, depending on the value of R c relative to this interval, you could have a response like this, where okay, it is not a perfect rectangle, but it reaches the maximum or minimum or if the time constant is very long compared to this period, it could also be like that, it does not reach the full level at all, but uh, in that interval, uh, it goes to some fraction of the full amplitude and then comes down. Okay. And in many cases, you can't, this is not a good approximation, that is a, a lumping everything into a single R and a single C. So, you have to make the network distributed. Because the capacitance is distributed everywhere along the line, it is not as though it is terminated by a capacitor. So, what will the frequency response of this look like? What do you think? So, it turns out let us say the total R is the same, but you divide it into n sections. Okay. So, then uh, what happens is, so let us say the lumped one looks like this on a log log scale, okay. this goes at minus 20 dB per decade. The distributed one, it looks more or less the same if the total R and total C are the same, but at high frequencies, it goes down a lot steeper. the pulse response also changes. Now, typically if you have interconnect on an IC, right, uh, it will be largely resistive, the inductive part will be uh, negligible, you can neglect that, okay, because the loss is too high, right. So, then it behaves more or less like an RC transmission line instead of uh, R and C. But if you look at the interconnect on a PCB and so on, this is a more appropriate model. So, you have sections of this, you would have studied this in uh, while studying transmission lines. This is the general transmission line, right, with both series loss and shunt loss. And you would have derived the equations for this. I am not very strict with notation here. Basically, this L, R, C, and G, these are. Uh, the inductance, resistance, capacitance and conductance of each section. Okay. So, in the transmission line description, you use the same symbols for inductance per unit length, resistance per unit length and so on and then express everything in terms of those. Okay. Now, first let us take the lossless transmission line. Basically, our goal is to get an idea of uh, 
what all can happen when you send data through this medium, through this media, okay. Now, uh, in reality what we will do is the channel will be very complicated, you measure it and you get the frequency response, but we need to know what kind of uh, aberrations can be there. So, if you take a lossless transmission line, so let me use the proper notation L comma C are for unit length quantities, maybe I will call it L prime and C prime. Then you divide it into sections L prime times d x c prime times d x, this will be the uh, representation of a section of a transmission line of length d x, right. Now, you can write the equations for this, right. Essentially, what you do is you represent the inductor current and the capacitor voltage as a function of the uh, uh, basically the distance variable x, okay, and then write out the equations, you will get some relationships between them, okay. So, you will find that the ratio of those uh, will be square root of L prime by C prime, right. This will be, I will not go into the details now, but you know this already. This is known as the characteristic impedance Z naught of the transmission line, it is the ratio of it is the square root of the ratio of uh, inductance per unit length to capacitance per unit length, okay. <coughs> now, uh, what does this mean for us? So, let us say you have a transmission line of uh, this you are familiar with, right? This uh, you have a transmission line, you have a lossless transmission line, it will have some characteristic impedance which is a real number and that is the square root of L prime by C prime, where L prime by C prime are uh, per unit uh, length uh, characteristic, I mean per unit length inductance and capacitance. Now, it turns out that you have a transmission line of length z naught and then you terminate it on uh, either side by the same characteristic characteristic impedance z naught okay then let's say you apply a pulse vs okay what will be v1 V s by 2. Basically, you know that uh, a transmission line, I mean initially it is relaxed and then you uh, apply a pulse. In the short term, it looks like a resistance of uh, value z naught. Okay. So, this becomes V 1 will be, if this is 1, this will be half. Okay. What will be V 2? same as V 1, but the signal takes some time to go from here to there. Okay. If this is the length of the transmission line and there will be some speed uh, of uh, 
the electromagnetic field inside the transmission line. So, there will be a delay which is L by V, this is the speed and this is basically the speed of light divided by square root of epsilon r times mu r, where epsilon r and mu r are relative permeability and relative permittivity of the medium. Okay. So, now typically if you make it with if you take a coaxial cable it will have some plastic insulation between the uh, between let us say uh, two copper conductors mu will be 1 epsilon will be about 4. So, you will get about half the speed of light okay. and speed of light it is good to remember of course, everybody remembers 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, but it may be more convenient to remember in uh, different types of units. So, it is 300 meters for microseconds or 300 millimeters per nanosecond or 300 microns per picoseconds 0.3 millimeters right. Now, if uh, epsilon is 4 it will become half of this. So, we will have uh, 150 millimeters per nanoseconds and 150 microns per picoseconds and so on. Okay. So, you get an idea of how much delay you have for the type of length that we will be talking about which will be in the sub millimeter to a few centimeter range. Okay. So, it will have some delay it will also reach 0.5 and this is the delay of the transmission line. Okay. Is this fine? So, in fact, this is what we would this is the scenario we would like to have right. You have a lossless transmission line with a certain characteristic impedance and then you terminate it on the two sides with exactly the same impedance then whatever you send will come out without any I mean it will have some delay that delay has to be there because uh, if you two things are separated by some distance information takes some time to get from here to there. So, that delay is there, but otherwise nothing happens. So, clearly if you I, if I get this for a unit step if I apply a rectangular uh, wave signal rectangular data then I will get the same rectangular data after the delay right this is the best case, but what are all the things that can go wrong. Yeah, so the terminating resistances are not equal to the characteristic impedance, right? That is possible. So now, so let's say this uh, on the far side, the terminating resistance is greater than Z naught. So what happens now? Okay. So, what will the waveform look like? I think you also know the reflection coefficient this is uh, there is a reflection coefficient that is defined and I think it is R L minus Z naught by R L plus Z naught right or is it the other way around? Do you remember the expression? This is the correct one. So, in this case what happens if R L is more than Z naught? V 2 will be more than V 1 ok, when? So, if R L is greater than Z naught V 2 will be uh, more than V 1 I mean in what period that is what should happen in steady state? Let us say you apply a step and wait for a really long time what will be the values of V 1 and V 2 here in this case. In steady state after a really long time what what is going to happen? 
what is the transmission line for DC? It is a short circuit, it is just a wire, right. So, what will be the values of V1 and V2? Huh? It will be R L by R L plus R S, it will just be a voltage divider, ok. Finally, it has to settle to that value, ok. So, now so let me mark that as uh, I have chosen uh, R S to be Z naught and R L to be more than Z naught. So, I will get more than half right that will be the final voltage. So, how will this uh, change now? What will happen? So, in this case basically there is a reflection only on this side on this side there is no reflection at all ok. So, what will happen is this will immediately go to the right value and then the that will come back after another delay of uh, T d right. So, this will do something like that is this correct? I think that is what will happen ok. Now, what happens if uh, I mean on the far side we have proper termination, but on the near side we do not have I mean R s is not equal to Z naught. So, let us say R s is I do not know less than Z naught. If R s is less than Z naught again the steady state value will be more than half right. that is the steady state value ok. So, what is going to happen? What will happen to V 1 just immediately after the step is applied? Yeah, V 1 will be more than V s by 2 in this case uh, V 1 will jump to some value more than V s by 2 and when it reaches the far end there will be no reflection ok. So, it will remain like this and it will do that ok. So, basically if uh, at least one side is terminated properly then you may have at most one reflection after that it comes back and then uh, there will be no further reflections right. So, that is uh, the thing, but in reality you will not have this ok. So, neither R L nor R S will be exactly equal to R naught. So, let us say I will assume that R S is more than Z naught, R L is more than Z naught and R S equals R L just for the sake of taking some example. What do you think will happen now? So, what will happen is this thing will keep on uh, uh, this actually does not. So, initially V 1 will jump to something less than half ok right and then uh, V 2 what will happen? It will reflect it will be more and this one will 
jump above that and this will stay that way and when it comes back here it will go below ok, it will keep doing this right. <coughs> it will keep alternating, but this alternating stuff will die out and eventually will reach because I chose R s equals R l it will eventually reach half ok. So, essentially you can get this oscillatory type behavior this delay is always you can have this oscillatory type behavior uh, if uh, both terminations are different from z naught ok and this is typically what you see. Now, even this picture is uh, highly ideal first of all we have assumed the transmission line to be lossless and secondly we assume that uh, both terminations are purely resistive that is not true either that is you will have some capacitance there and then some capacitance there at least ok. So, the terminations will themselves be complex impedances. So, because of this what you end up typically seeing is if you apply a step you will at the far end you will see some ringing and so on and eventually it will settle ok. The settled value will depend on the DC values of resistances ok. So, that is one thing if the reflections go back and forth this is what will happen ok. Now, uh, you also have loss in the transmission line the loss is bad in that it will uh, cause a signal loss there, but in some ways it is good actually the reflections will not go back and forth because by the time the signal comes here it would have died out the reflections will not be as strong. So, in terms of reflections it is good to have some loss in that if you have a very long transmission line which is lossless then this reflections can be really annoying because it will go and then it will come back after a long time right. So, you will have this really long tail reflections, but on a real PCB that is not such a big deal because the loss itself will kill off the reflections ok, but you have other problems right. Now, there is a particular condition for uh, even if you have lossy transmission line you can have perfect transmission do you know this condition. Let us say you have a lossy transmission line these are all per unit length quantities I mean this times d x let us say. So, you have a transmission line with loss, but you can still transmit uh, any signal without distortion here distortion I do not mean nonlinear distortion, but without changing the shape you know the condition for this can this happen. What is the characteristic impedance of this line I mean earlier we had the lossless line with only L prime and C prime and then uh, the characteristic impedance for square root of L prime by C prime ok. Uh, what is it now? Yeah, so in this case you have a complex characteristic impedance in general now is it possible for this to be frequency independent and real this number basically if uh, you have this condition r prime by l prime equals g prime by sorry this is g prime g prime by c prime ok. So, this is the distortionless condition. what will happen is if you apply. So, then if you take such a transmission line and then z naught will be real. So, you have to terminate it in z naught on uh, both sides. If you do that if you apply a pulse here ok. So, you will not get half the pulse you will get some smaller fraction because of the loss through this, but 
you will get exactly the same shape. If you send a rectangular pulse, you will get a rectangular pulse. Again, this is not uh, like very relevant to us because we can't arrange this condition. But uh, initially, like long back when they were laying this uh, very long cables, transatlantic cables, or I mean other types of cables, uh, the majority of the parasitic was the resistance and capacitance. So then someone figured that if you actually put an inductance in series, it's not very intuitive. I mean, today with uh, this analysis, it becomes very obvious. It's like one line. But uh, uh, there was this physicist called Pupin who figured out that if you put series inductances between sections, you will essentially mimic this distortionless condition and you get better transmission. Okay. So, this is there, this condition is there, but typically we will also we will not be able to arrange for this either. Okay. So, in our case, what happens is that let us say you take a trace on a PCB. There are many complications. First of all, let us just take a single transmission line. It will have <coughs> so this L prime is I mean it is just a length of wire, so it will have some inductance and it will have some resistance. Okay. In addition, this will have skin effect, which means that its resistance goes on increasing with frequency. Okay. So that is a problem by itself. And then you have capacitance that is between the line and the ground plane you will have some capacitance and that of course is a problem and then you can have some loss conductance that is this printed circuit board or any insulator is not a pure insulator right it will dissipate some power when there is some voltage across it so that will lead to some loss so that leads to this one okay so, now certainly we will not have the distortionless condition, the loss conductance will not be so high okay? because uh, for distortionless condition the G prime has to be significant that will not be the case. So, you have L prime, C prime uh, and R prime mostly and then on top of that you will have uh, uh, the skin effect on the uh, resistance. Okay? Now, and like I said uh, what you terminate with is first of all this R will not be equal to Z naught the Z naught itself is complex now because you have significant R and L. I mean it probably uh, imaginary part may be small, but it is still complex and then the termination is not ideal. So, you will have parasitics. Okay. And R S and R L will not necessarily be equal to Z naught, right? <laughs> you also have parasitic capacitance. On top of that, it is very rare that you will see a single transmission line between let us say the transmitter chip and the receiver chip. Okay. That happens sometimes uh, on a small board, but on a big back plane what can happen is that uh, you will have the back plane. Back plane is basically nothing but a large PCB. Okay. So, there will be some transmission line from here to there. Remember one of the goals is also to transmit lots of data. So, what ends up happening is you pack lots of transmission lines in a small area okay. and similarly now uh, what will happen is there will be a connector here. And another board may be plugged in in this direction. You have seen things like this, right? Even if you open a regular PC, you will have a main board, the motherboard, and then like cards which are plugged into the motherboard, into the connectors, right? So, first of all, even if you make this a nice transmission line, this connector will not be a nice transmission line, it will have metal bent in all kinds of directions and so on. Okay? So, that will be there. And then on this uh, transmission on this PCB there will be some trace okay. 
and maybe your chip is here and maybe even there is another connector somewhere this may be the transmitter this may be the receiver ok. So, now you can see first of all you have an interface there interface means basically a junction of two different transmission lines and even if you assume that this transmission line is nicely it has a nicely controlled characteristic impedance then you will have another impedance discontinuity there. So, similarly here and there ok <coughs> and there may be more what can happen is that uh, this back plane or any PCB will have multiple layers again to pack a large number of lines you will use all the layers. So, you will go from the top layer and maybe you will switch from let us say one layer to another layer this could be at the bottom or it could even be sometimes in the middle that is you switch from this layer to this layer which is somewhere within the PCB. I mean this PCB is also I think you know that it has multiple layers right you can have even 10 layers on a PCB right or even more. So, you have this. So, that means that you have a via that is some connection between these two. So, that is another impedance discontinuity and then here it is even worse you have a via and vias typically go all the way through the PCB right even if you are tapping the signal in the middle even if let us say you want to connect two middle layers the via between them goes all the way through the PCB. So, that itself is like another small transmission line which is open circuited right because this side is open circuited that side is open circuited ok. So, there are uh, some techniques to deal with it when you have things like this they will uh, drill from the bottom. So, that this open circuit stuff is as short as possible and so on, but even with all that you can see that first of all there will be large number of impedance discontinuities and then these transmission impedances uh, transmission line impedances not very well controlled you will go through like multiple transmission lines and then you have the chip and so on ok. this is not the same everywhere and you have lots of uh, impedance discontinuities. Anytime you have an impedance discontinuity that is an interface with uh, impedance different impedance this side and that side you can have reflections right. So, for instance if you transmit a pulse there will be a reflection from here ok and then some part of the signal goes this way and there can be a reflection from there. Like I said if the line is really long then it is actually better for reflection the reflection would have got attenuated because of the loss of the line, but if the line is very short then the reflection problem can be worse ok. So, uh, what happens is for a very long line the there will be a lot of loss, but there will be little reflection and for a very short line there will be a lot of reflection, but then there may be very little loss ok. On top of this you have the natural skin effect right. When you write the equations for the transmission lines you write r plus j omega l plus uh, but divided by g plus j omega c that is the characteristic impedance the square root of that. And uh, if r itself is dependent on omega then things change even further right I mean things will not be uniform with omega ok. So, because of all this what happens is that if you send in a rectangular pulse ideally you should have got maybe after some delay the same rectangular pulse ok. In reality what you get will be first of all like greatly reduced in amplitude maybe let me draw this with a larger amplitude. Okay. So, this will have some delay and then it may have some 
weird shape like that and then it can go off and then it can go back and forth something like this this can easily happen ok. So, if you send in a pulse you will get some pulse that will be spread out in time and it will also have all kinds of it could have uh, ringing and things like that ok. And sometimes what can happen is because of this uh, multiple reflections right. So, you can have a pulse like this. You can have a pulse like this it goes like that and then it is quiet for a while and then from a far away reflection it can do that and so on ok. All this is possible. So, now the question is how do you transfer data on something like this? What is the data rate that you will use? Data rate is I mean this is just a single pulse let us say this constitutes a single one and you have to send a sequence of plus ones and minus ones and the rate at which you send a new symbol is the data rate. Okay, so, what rate will you use if you have something like this? Something like that. What will be the symbol period? When will you send a new pulse? One is, of course, if you use a very low data rate, everything will get fixed because uh, <coughs> let us say instead of a symbol being this wide, if you use a symbol that is very wide then I will not show the delay, but the output also it will do some weird stuff, but then eventually reach this and then it will do some weird stuff and eventually reach that. So, then everything will be fine, but that is not the idea the whole idea is to send more and more data in as little time as possible because that is our goal. So, you will end up with some stuff like that ok. So, then what we have to do is find ways of uh, first of all modeling this effect and then recovering the data ok. So, earlier in one while discussing clock and data recovery I assume that the d in had distinguishable ones and zeros. Maybe it is not full amplitude maybe one is not plus one volt and minus one uh, like a zero is not minus one volt, but at least it will be distinguishable, but we will see in this case that it may not even be like that right. Like for instance if you have let us say a large number of uh, zeros or a minus ones and a single one and this it is possible that and this is the 0 level right this is plus 1 minus 1. So, in this case depending on the channel it is possible that it reaches steady state here and then because of the single pulse it does not even reach the 0 level ok. So, no clock and data recovery can work from something like this that is uh, if you are not even able to see that it is I mean the, if the data is not even able to cross 0 then the clock and data recovery will not work ok. So, we have to first fix this and then feed it to clock and data recovery circuits. Okay, so, as the channels become more and more challenging as you have more and more attenuation these things become a problem ok. So, for now let me just show you some uh, slides uh, for some pictures of this. This is a nice introductory paper this is not very technical uh, I will send you the reference to this. Uh, they show some trends in this you can see basically the frequency response of this is 86 centimeters it says like almost a meter and then you can see that uh, there is a lot of attenuation ok. That means that uh, one way to figure out what happens to your data is let us say you send 10 gigabits per second data what is the fastest alternating pattern you can send that will be just the 1010 right. What is the frequency of that signal that will be now a periodic signal right of what frequency. 5 gigahertz because every 100 picosecond you will have plus 1 and another 100 picosecond minus 1 the period is 200 picosecond. So, one quick way to uh, look at what the channel may do to your data is to look at what the attenuation is at half the data rate that is if you are looking at 10 gigabits per second you want to see what happens to 5 what happens at 5 gigahertz ok. Now, you are not sending a if alternating data is not a 5 gigahertz sine wave, but still that is a good way of doing it. So, in this case what is the attenuation at 5 gigahertz? for this channel almost minus 20 dB. So, that means that if you send a 100 milli volt uh, if you if let us say plus 1 constitutes 100 milli volts minus 1 is minus 100 milli volts then you send this what will be the output amplitude roughly 10 milli volts 10 milli volts 20 dB is a factor of 10. So, you get only 10 milli volts signal ok. Now, of course, you send random data. So, that means that that isolated one will be a problem ok. 
Now the attenuation can be even more severe than this. Later we will see that this shortcut is not uh, all that great. That is, you can have multiple channels, different channels with the same attenuation at data rate by two, but it will behave quite differently because it also depends on what else is happening. There could be notches in the frequency response and so on. So now you can see that if you send a pulse, this is what it does, right? Here again, he has taken 10 gigabits per second as an example. So that means that I mean this the distance between these two dots is 100 picoseconds. Okay. So if you send a single pulse of 100 picosecond wide, you will get something that lasts many, many, many pulses. Okay. And what can the responses look like? There are different types of uh, aberrations. So skin effect will make it go uniformly like that and then dielectric loss will also give you low pass behavior, but slightly differently and then this notch that is you can have uh, basically a notch essentially something like a resonant notch right. This is because of these tubs that are open and things like that. Okay. So, for instance, I mean if you have a transmission line, I mean just a transmission line which is open circuited at that side, it can look like a short circuit at some frequency right. You know this you have a transmission line, ideal transmission line that is open circuit on that side. On this side at some frequency it can look like a short circuit. What frequency is that? When that uh, when the length of the transmission line uh, corresponds to one fourth the wavelength at that uh, frequency then it actually looks like a short circuit. It inverts the impedance right. If you uh, similarly if you have a shorted transmission line it can look like an open. So, let us say in one of these cases you have some piece of transmission line that is hanging out from there. So, you have multiple transmission lines connected together, but not only that because of uh, discontinuities and so on you can have a picture like this where this is open. So, this will actually look like a short circuit here right, it will short out the signal completely and you will not get anything. So, you could get a notch. So, especially because of these connectors and things like that you can get these notches. So, there can be all kinds of uh, uh, aberrations and then you can see again that here uh, yeah, each one of these gives you different type of pulse response. The skin effect mainly spreads it out. If you have a notch it gives you something like ringing it goes down comes back up and so on. So, all these things can happen. And the reality is some very complicated combination of these things because first of all uh, you have multiple sections with different transmission lines connectors and so on. You can you can characterize this by measurement, but you cannot analytically handle them. And secondly you will be able to I mean you have to be able to handle a variety of scenarios because it is not as though if you design a transceiver it will always be used for a long channel. It could be used for a short channel also. So, you have to be able to and in that case the loss will be less, but the reflection will be more you have to be able to deal with that. Okay. And in the same uh, scenario again we never talk about a single transceiver these days I mean you will have arrays of transceivers all transmitting data some of them will be short, some of them will be long, some of them will be uh, carrying signals on the upper level, some of them on the lower level. So, there will be all kinds of uh, variable scenarios. So, you will get a combination of these things. So, we first model this and then see how to handle the handle these things and that process is called equalization that is to restore the signals to uh, distinguishable levels that process is known as equalization. After that you can feed it to clock recovery like a regular signal. Okay. So, we will uh, in the following classes we will look at all of these.